In this lesson, you'll learn how to eliminate the effects of an intercompany sale of equipment between a parent and a subsidiary. Intercompany transactions between a parent and a subsidiary are fine when they are two separate entities with separate financial records. But once parent and sub consolidate and become one economic entity, then you're effectively selling to yourself. And that is not a legitimate transaction. So we have to eliminate those intercompany transactions. Just remember, our goal in eliminating intercompany transactions is to put everything back as if the intercompany transaction never happened. There should be no trace of any intercompany transactions left on our books. With that in mind, let's go to the board. Start with the question. Prepare pens eliminating journal entries required for consolidation purposes for the year ended December 31st, year 3. They want December 31st, year three journal entries. Make a note on your board. We know from the question that Penn has consolidated financials, which means there's at least one subsidiary and a parent. Let's go to the rest of the prompt. Penn owns 100% of the outstanding common stock of SIL. On January 1, year three, Penn sold equipment to SIL for $120,000, which was originally purchased on January 1, year one for $100,000. Penn depreciated the equipment over 10 years using straight line depreciation with no salvage value. SIL decides to depreciate the equipment over 8 years, also using straight line with no salvage value. This is an intercompany PP&E question. We know that because it says that Penn sold equipment to its 100% subsidiary SIL. Let's start at the beginning with the intercompany equipment sale. On January 1, year 3, Penn sold equipment to SIL for $120,000, which was originally purchased on January 1, year 1 for $100,000. Let's do the journal entry. For FAR, remember, start with what's easy, start with cash. Here, Penn is getting $120,000 cash for selling its equipment. Cash is increasing, that's a debit. What's the other side of the entry? We're selling equipment, that's an asset, and it's decreasing. Credit, $100,000. When we get rid of the equipment, we have to get rid of everything that goes with it. What always goes together with equipment? Depreciation. They're like salt and pepper, always together. How much is accumulated depreciation here? Penn purchased the equipment on January 1Y1 for $100,000 and depreciated it straight line over 10 years with no salvage. We calculate $100,000 divided by 10 years equals... 10,000 per year. And here, two years have passed. 10,000 per year times two years equals 20,000 accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation is a contra asset. A contra asset has a normal balance of credit. When we sell the asset, we get rid of the accumulated depreciation. That's a debit. Let's add up our debits. 120,000 plus 20,000 equals 140,000. And our credits equal 100,000. We have a $40,000 difference, and it's on the credit side. Where's it going? Gain! Penn is selling equipment with a carrying value of 80,000, and it's getting 120,000 cash. Penn is getting more than it's giving. It has a gain, 40,000. Now, what does SIL record? SIL paid 120,000 cash. That's cash going down. It's a credit. What's the other side of the entry? The equipment that SIL just bought, 120,000 debit. So we have our entries for the sale of the equipment. Let's do the eliminating entry when Penn consolidates at your end. Now Penn and SIL are consolidating into one single entity. So it looks like parent sold the equipment to itself and recorded a gain. We have to get rid of this transaction because you can't sell stuff to yourself and <laughs> record it as a legitimate transaction. Remember, the key to eliminating intercompany transactions is to put everything back as if the intercompany transaction never happened. Let's look at Penn and Sills' original transactions. Starting at the top, we can see that cash perfectly offsets itself. Penn debited cash and Sill credited the cash. They zero each other out, so there's nothing to eliminate there. Next, look for revenues or gains because in financial reporting, think of it as companies are always trying to make their income as high as possible. Higher profits, higher bonuses. You get the picture. 
That's why we accountants are doom and gloom. We're conservative to rein in the companies from overinflating income. So start with types of income. You can't have revenues or gains when you sell to yourself. Here we have a gain. It's a credit, 40,000. So to get rid of it, we have to flip it. Debit, 40,000. In this transaction, Penn sold Sill equipment. When Penn sold it, it increased from 100 to 120. That's a 20,000 increase for transferring the equipment to itself within the consolidated entity. Remember, we have to put everything back as if the transaction never happened. Then we have to get rid of the 20,000 increase and put the equipment back to 100,000. Let's use a T account for the equipment of the consolidated entity. The equipment was originally on Penn's books at 100,000. When Penn sold the equipment to Sill, it took the equipment off its books for 100,000 and Sill picked it up for 120,000. That means it's now on the books for 120,000. But if the intercompany sale never happened, it would have just been on Penn's books for 100,000. That's what we want, 100,000. How do we get it there? Credit 20,000. What's left? Accumulated depreciation. Initially, Penn had accumulated depreciation 20,000. When Penn sold the equipment, we took it off as a debit. If the intercompany transaction had never happened, Penn would still have this on its books. So we put it back by crediting 20,000. Do our debits equal our credits? Yes, they do. That's the first part for the intercompany sale. Now we go to the second part, depreciation. Remember, PP&E and depreciation go together like salt and pepper. If you have an adjustment for equipment, check to see if you have an adjustment for depreciation. The intercompany transaction happened on January 1, year 3. Now we're consolidating on December 31st, year 3. One year has passed. In accounting, the passage of time means accruals. With equipment, we have an accrual for depreciation. Sill had the equipment for one year and recorded depreciation. Sill calculated year three depreciation as purchase price 120 divided by eight years equals 15,000 per year. Sill recorded depreciation expense of 15,000. Expense increasing is a debit. What's the other side? Accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation is a contra asset. It's contra to the equipment. A contra asset has a normal balance of credit 15,000. Remember the goal. We're trying to eliminate all intercompany transactions as if they had never happened. If this equipment sale never occurred and Penn had kept the equipment, what would Penn have recorded for depreciation? Penn would have depreciation expense of 10,000 per year. Expense increasing is a debit. And the other side of the entry would be accumulated depreciation credit 10,000. Sill actually reported depreciation of 15,000, but to eliminate the intercompany sale as if it never happened, Penn would still own the equipment and depreciation expense should be 10,000. How do we get depreciation expense of 15,000 down to 10,000? Credit 5,000. What's the other side of the entry? Accumulated depreciation. Sill recorded accumulated depreciation 15,000. But if we pretend like the intercompany equipment sale never happened and Penn still owned the equipment, then accumulated depreciation would have only increased by 10,000. How do we get accumulated depreciation of 15,000 down to 10,000? Debit 5,000. Just to summarize, for intercompany transactions between a parent and a sub, we have to adjust our financials and put everything back as if the intercompany transaction never occurred. So that at the end of the day, there should be no trace of any intercompany transactions left on our books. Next up, we're going to review the elimination entries for intercompany sales of inventory. You want to be sure to ace these questions on the exam. So don't go away. I'm Liz Cho with Test Prep in a Snap.